Hello, this is Henrik Beschman. I'm a software developer in Toronto, Canada, and this is an introductory screencast on my presentation of uh, my concrete concept of what Drupal is. Drupal describes itself, of course, as a content management system and indeed is a content management framework for presentation of sort of normal content, but also as um, a tool for development of uh, websites that really constitute um, sophisticated applications. Um, that's all true. That wasn't quite enough for me as a developer to uh, help me um, organize a model of Drupal in my mind in such a way that I could uh, decompose the individual components um, to allow me to focus um, on the uh, individual components that I was working on as I was developing. Um, I'm new to Drupal. I was uh, introduced to it uh, in March of this year, 2013, uh, sort of thrown into the deep end uh, with uh, an assignment of developing uh, the mechanics of an e a business to business e commerce application. So along the way, I found um, a bunch of concepts that uh, helped me um, understand Drupal to the point of being able to work with it. Um, and I wanted to present those ideas um, now um, while, it, while they're still fresh in my mind and in the hope that they're going to uh, help others uh, to um, go through the initial learning curve uh, perhaps more quickly than I did. Uh, by reputation, it takes about six months to a year to go through the Drupal learning curve, and uh, certainly I'm at the five-month stage, so that um, yeah, I still have a bunch to learn, so I think that's certainly true. I think uh, this uh, uh, set of uh, screencasts might be of interest to anyone involved in um, Drupal website development, such as a project manager, architect, a builder, a developer, a themer, um, owner, sponsor, administrator. Um, really anyone involved uh, uh, with a Drupal development that uh, might benefit from a concrete look at uh, uh, the key characteristics of Drupal um, in order to um, be able to, as I say, decompose uh, the aspects of Drupal and isolate um, items that uh, need work. So um, here it is in summary. After um, quite a bit of deliberation, I've come up with these uh, five um, what I call key properties of Drupal, a resource manager, configuration manager, content manager, a state change machine, that was the hard one, and a rapid application development tool. So uh, just to give a quick look at those, um, in terms of the resource manager, that's really um, having a look at the files that are involved with uh, uh, the Drupal installation, um, um, really the core Drupal installation, which is about a million lines of code, so I'm told, and also a bunch of contributed mo modules, typically depending on the use case for the website, um, as well as uh, user files, uh, uh, such as images, um, you know, various documents that the user community might add. Um, in addition, the uh, an important part of the resource management is uh, management of the tables that are involved with the database uh, supporting um, all Drupal um, websites. Um, there are a lot of them. Um, the demonstration website that I'll show is one of my personal websites called vegetablediet.ca and as you can see, um, although it's a fairly simple website, it already has 115 tables, so there's a fair bit to talk about there. And it turns out there's really one key concept um, that is uh, particularly helpful uh, to, uh, to understand that database. Um, of course, uh, it's a uh, it, the key strength of uh, Drupal is that it is a configuration manager, um, which is to say that uh, in most cases, uh, much of Drupal 
uh, powered websites uh, can be built with um, nothing more than taking advantage of the configuration capabilities. So there's my vegetable diet website. Um, and um, as you can see, there are a number of configuration options, uh, such as uh, blocks that it might appear in the, at the bottom or the sidebars, the various context types. Um, these are op uh, configuration options uh, presented by some modules, a couple of modules that I've added, menus, um, and so forth. Um, so it turns out that uh, most of Drupal can be um, uh, websites can be uh, configured. It's also, uh, of course, the main thing that people use it for is a content manager. And uh, so when you're logged in and you're sitting on a page, uh, it's very easy to um, edit that page and um, add resources to it, such as uh, images. Uh, the one that really had me going was uh, the code and how it's organized. Um, many websites nowadays are organized with a, a model view controller um, sort of approach. Mm, doesn't really apply to Drupal. Um, there is some uh, chatter on the website about uh, something called a presentation abstraction control model, um, which uh, even the people that talk about it uh, acknowledge uh, is accidental if it happens to apply to Drupal because Drupal sort of developed organically. So my own state, uh, my own take on that um, after after quite a bit of thought was uh, to describe it as a state change machine and in fact as a dispatch driven state change machine with a uh, service oriented architecture. So uh, I'll get into that in some detail, but just to give a quick pre preview, um, Drupal essentially is organized around callbacks that are triggered by um, various internal events. Um, any any so-called module, uh, including a custom module that you write uh, when you're developing your own website, can register a callback, uh, which when registered is um, provided with uh, um, kind of uh, a, the data model or the current uh, set of data that uh, the callback is uh, responsible for. And then uh, your code is given the opportunity to make some changes. Uh, in this case, all I'm doing is uh, setting uh, the page title for the view so that um, when, um, when I go to uh, the main page here, uh, this title is presented when I'm on that particular queue, or this, or this title is presented when I'm on that particular queue. Uh, so, um, that is a uh, complex but very interesting topic, and uh, probably is one of the things that provides um, uh, the great flexibility and strength um, to Drupal and allows um, all the contributions um, that are available. And finally, um, it's a rapid application development tool. Um, I found a random website um, called uh, Eurocenters, uh, which happens to be built by a um, Drupal distribution, which is the core Drupal uh, uh, code plus um, commerce uh, modules that allow um, e-commerce to take place on a site and um, uh, that combination of tools plus um, custom development can lead to some pretty sophisticated sites. This 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 one looks like it has something to do with uh, um, tours and, and language learning but as you can see it uh, has uh, quite a lot of functionality built into it. Um, so that set of properties uh, to me um, describes in a highly structured way the uh, various aspects of Drupal, Drupal and lets me um, approach Drupal in a structured fashion, um, take each area, decompose each area into the component parts and then examine how those individual parts examine with the other parts. In other words, it, it's, it's given me um, kind, of a, kind of a guide or roadmap 
um, that allows me to analyze and diagnose sort of situations that I'm in and find pathways to solutions um, very quickly or fairly quickly. Uh, Drupal itself has uh, Drupal itself has a lot of documentation on its website, which is uh, quite excellent. Um, but I did find that there was a uh, particularly for me as a newcomer, there was a, a very high uh, noise to signal ratio. In other words, um, I found the, uh, my searches for information to um, diagnose a problem and find uh, ways through it to be um, quite confusing in many cases. In the end, I always found, um, almost always found documentation that was helpful here. Um, but I did find that um, eventually uh, my take on uh, Drupal with these five uh, characteristics did help me uh, reduce the amount of time that was required for um, finding those solutions. So that is uh, my overview. Uh, Drupal is a resource manager, configuration manager, content manager, state change machine, a rapid application development tool. And what I'll do in the next uh, set of screencasts is go into each of those areas in some detail. This is Henrik Beschman of internetcommons.ca.